I am absolutely fascinated by the dark mud in the chasm. Like, okay, I get it. It's mostly this blackish purple crude oil looking puddle of gook, but its effects on the chasm should not be overlooked. The dark mud is as important to the chasm as the fog was to Surumi, or the sheer cold was to Dragonspine, or the Bale Thunder was to Seirai. It's an environmental hazard with a really important backstory. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that the dark mud is the most important environmental hazard that we've seen so far. Mostly because I think I've stumbled upon enough evidence to connect the existence of the dark mud to the real purpose of the celestial nails. So grab a seat and get comfy, because in this video we're going to investigate the dark mud, the celestial nails, and unearth some of the well-hidden secrets of Tevat. But before we start, let's get a really quick disclaimer out of the way. This is a theory video. That means it's full of a combination of speculation and lore, so please don't take everything presented here today as fact, because a lot of it is my opinion. Note that this video will also contain a lot of spoilers for the chasm and will also be referencing the Sacred Sakura Cleansing Quest as well as A's second story quest. This will be your only spoiler warning, so be warned. As always, I will be citing my sources for further reading downstairs in the description box, and other post-video corrections will be in the pinned comment, so please make sure to check those out if you're interested. Okay, disclaimer out of the way, let's get into the actual theory part of this theory. Okay, so we know that the Dark Mud and the Lumen Spar both appeared at roughly the same time, immediately after the miners uncovered the crystal fragment of the nail in the depths of the chasm. The spread of the dark mud in particular was so bad that the Liwei Chising had to shut down all mining operations until further notice. Prior to this, they had been mining the area pretty safely for thousands of years, so this must have been quite severe. Even after we opened the chasm back up for a select few individuals, we're warned about the dangers of spending too much time near both the dark mud and the crystal fragment. The crystal fragment, if you missed it, is actually a fragment of the celestial nail buried deeper in the chasm. Messing with it causes it to recombine with the main body of the nail. We experienced something similar with the fragments on Dragonspine if you completed that area because I actually think it might be optional. But there's no dark mud on Dragonspine! So what's the connection between the dark mud and the celestial nail in the chasm then? Well, when we first discovered the Celestial Nail, it appeared to be sucking in this weird blackish-purple smoke which Paimon said was a lot like the Dark Mud. She also said that the four devices surrounding the nail were being used to, quote, corrupt the Big Crystal, the Big Crystal being the nail, and she also mentions that the monsters that spawned from the mud seemed to be eating away at the nail, which is a little bit of an odd choice of words. But that aside, the four devices I mentioned can actually give us a bit of a clue about the relationship between the mud and the celestial nail. See, while the mud corrupts and eats away at the nail, the nail seems to be able to suppress and cleanse the mud. Case in point, the Lumen Spar and the Lumen Stone Adjuvant. I'm proceeding on the assumption that both of these have the same properties since we use the Lumen Spar to upgrade the Lumen Stone Adjuvant, so that just makes sense. Remember that the Lumen Spar also started spreading at the same time as the Dark Mud. They're the same color and supposed crystal as the core of the nail, so it's very possible to think of them as portable mini nails or maybe seed crystals, although that's not really the best term to use here. They do provide a way for the nail to extend its reach without actually having to move from its location. The Lumen Stone Adjuvant, when charged with energy, can cleanse the oozing concretions of the Dark Mud. Using that on the muddy devices corrupting the nail forces the monsters out of the mud and changes how the mechanisms actually behave. While covered in mud, they were sending corrupted energy to the nail, but after being cleansed and charged up with the Luminstone Adjuvant, they start sending pure light energy to the nail instead. Interestingly, the light that they send towards the nail is very similar to the light that we see around Narukami Shrine, the top of Dragonspine, and the portal to Enkonomiya. Dragonspine also has a nail, which would make sense for comparison purposes, but Enkonomiya and the Narukami Shrine only have the Dainichi Mikoshi and the Sacred Sakura as comparable structures. I'm going to ignore the Dainichi Mikoshi for this video because we don't really know a whole lot about its true nature in terms of like how it actually works, but we'll talk about the Sacred Sakura's possible connection to the Celestial Nails a little bit later, just keep this in mind for now. Now you might wonder why there aren't Lumen Stones in Dragonspine, and actually there are. They're the Crimson Agates. 
I mean, sure, they're not like a one-to-one, -one, but crimson agates are red while lumens bar are blue, and while the shapes are similar, it's not like they're actually recolors of each other. Plus, the lumen spar are used to upgrade the lumen stone adjutant, while the crimson agates are used to upgrade the frost bearing tree. To me, this implies that the tree and the lumen stone adjuvant might actually have a similar function. But the biggest difference between the two is that the crimson agates are likely corrupted in part by Durin's toxic blood seeping into the mountain. His blood is also why the frost bearing tree looks the way it does and why it thirsts for revenge in blood, so blaming Durin's blood for corrupting some magic gemstones that are used to feed a magic tree doesn't feel like too much of a stretch at this point, but maybe that's just me. So, what's the initial takeaway? Well, that the Lumen Spar are small, mobile versions of the Celestial Nails whose purpose are to suppress the spread of the Dark Mud, which means that the Celestial Nails also share the same purpose. In light of that, the big question you might have is, what exactly is the Dark Mud then, and why were the Celestial Nails sent to suppress it in the first place, especially when there is no Dark Mud on Dragonspine? But to answer that, we need to go look at Inazuma's Sacred Sakura. So here's the thing. The Sacred Sakura was planted thousands of years ago in the past at the request of the original Electro Archon, Makoto. The purpose of this leyline tree was to buy A some time and to protect Inazuma. It was never explicitly stated what the tree was actually protecting Inazuma from, although we are given a clue about this during the world quest when we are asked by a ghostly shrine maiden, Kazari, to cleanse the roots of the sacred Sakura. Now according to Kazari, the sacred Sakura has the ability to collect and absorb evil energy which it contains within its roots. At certain points, shrine maidens erect barriers around these roots in order to prevent this evil miasma and filth from leaking out and infecting the people of Inazuma. When the accumulation of the filth hits a great enough threshold, it can form something called a miasmic tumor. If left unchecked for too long, this tumor will cause disasters to occur, like this one time a few hundred years ago when the Sakura's roots got so infected that the monsters ravaged the land and the ocean turned jet black. So cleansing this stuff is pretty important. Keeping the roots of the sacred Sakura clean allows it to protect Inazuma by absorbing all of this toxic energy flowing around the area. So what's that got to do with the dark mud? Well... There's a good chance that the evil miasma and the filth that the sacred Sakura is supposed to contain is the same substance as the dark mud in the chasm. See, the dark mud forms these bulbous cysts known as oozing concretions, which can be purified with the lumenstone adjuvant. The sacred Sakura develops a miasmic tumor. And do you know what an adjuvant actually is? It can be two things. It's either something that is applied after initial treatment for cancer, especially to suppress tumor formation, or a substance which boosts the body's immune response to an antigen. And in this case, an antigen being a toxic or foreign substance in the body that can make you quite sick. So that means we're using a magic anti-tumor rock to suppress the dark mud in the chasm. It is therefore possible that the dark mud is like pre-cancerous tumor-forming substances that we're trying to cleanse before they manage to form an actual tumor somewhere in the roots of some tree that happens to be connected to the chasm somewhere. The sacred Sakura is a ley line tree, which means that its roots are supposed to be filled with elemental energy, memories, and apparently whatever this miasmic filth is supposed to be. And since everything returns to the ley lines when it dies, then is it at all possible that the sacred Sakura is functioning like a like a, like a water filtration system? And that the evil miasmic filth is actually mixed in with all that elemental energy and the memories and the ley line tree is filtering it out, creating this toxic waste material. That would make the dark mud and the miasmic filth a byproduct of the ley lines. So it's nasty ley line gunk. Way back in version 1.6, I made a video on how I thought elemental and ley line energy was very similar to radiation from radioactive elements. There's a link below if you're interested in that. This theory suggested that Dragonspine actually experienced a nuclear fallout event and that visions function as something like a, like a radiation shield. Thanks to the chasm, I'm more confident than ever that this theory is correct, because I think that the dark mud can actually be likened to nuclear waste, which was a piece of the theory I was missing way back when. 
I mean, think about it. When you try to generate energy from radioactive elements, at some point you'll be left with a hazardous waste material. And it's not only hazardous, but it's also indisposable in its current form. This radioactive waste has to be stored in a really specific way for long periods of time before it finally becomes inert. Until that point, extended exposure can cause radiation poisoning. Incidentally, the dark mud can cause symptoms of nausea, dizziness, headaches, hot flashes, difficulty breathing, and even hallucinations in humans without a vision. These same symptoms can also occur when a visionless human gets too close to either the celestial nail or one of its crystal fragments. What's interesting about this is that all of these symptoms are also found in people with mild to severe radiation poisoning. It's kind of fun to think of the ley line system as one giant nuclear reactor, but none of this explains why Dragonspine has a nail but no mud and why Celestia would be throwing these giant nuclear containment cores at to that. So let's look into that. The weird thing about the celestial nails being used to suppress the dark mud is that they stop being tools of destruction and instead become a divine blessing. Since the mud is toxic to visionless humans, the celestial nails could be seen as like a band-aid solution to a decaying system that started to leak this toxic sludge. So what about Dragonspine then? Why isn't there any mud? Why did the nail bring destruction there and not a temporary reprieve? I don't think it was intentional for the nail to destroy the civilization at Solvindigir. Because here's the thing, Solvindigir was a green paradise in a frozen landscape, all because they had this amazing flourishing ley line tree. Celestia was apparently stationed near enough that the people of Solvindigir could seek guidance from them directly, and we actually do have records of this. Now notice the frescoes here in the mural room. The mountain is obviously depicting Dragonspine, and Celestia is hovering right above it, but to the left we have two men with crowns receiving a gift from a winged deity type thing. But look at what's in this winged deity's hands. While it's not a perfect match, I think it's very possible that this is a variation of the symbol for the ley lines. You see this right here? In every domain where there's a ley line disorder, it's marked by this symbol. I've taken this to mean that the people of Solvindignir may have been given the blessings of the ley lines from the gods of Celestia themselves. So what happened? Well, in the Tiara artifact sets, there are several descriptions of the gods gifting blessings and knowledge to the people only to have it end in disaster. Some tiaras mention the road to temptation and how that's inevitable, but the Tiara of Flame specifically says, but would a day come when such a wonderful time might come to an end? To this question, the envoys gave no answer, so the people chose from among them a chief priest. And adorning his head with a crown of white branches, they sent him out into the deep places of the world, to antediluvian ruins and long-buried altars of sacrifice to seek answers and enlightenment. Which is interesting. It implies that men got greedy for knowledge that the gods wouldn't give them, so they sent a crowned priest deep into the earth in order to get even more knowledge. But you know what's down there? Ley line tree roots and probably a whole lot of dark mud, so my guess is that the priests did not find enlightenment, but instead were subject to the hallucinations and corrupted memories of the dark mud, just like we saw with Shi Chiang in the chasm. Celestia, realizing what had happened, sent down a celestial nail to suppress the spread of the mud since it would have been more than the local ley line tree could handle, but something must have happened during launch and the nail split into three pieces, missing their intended target completely. One fragment even hit the ley line tree that served Sol Vindignir and killed it. Suddenly their lush paradise became a frigid wasteland, all because the ley lines that controlled the weather were no longer able to be controlled properly. The broken ley lines are the reason why you can't even use the Mondstadt treasure compass on Dragonspine. The compasses navigate via the ley lines, and Dragonspine has none. Which is also why I don't think there's any mud there. Anymore. I think it all, like, bled out, and that's why we have the sheer cold. The sheer cold is considered a ley line disorder and does sap our HP just like standing in the dark mud does. It's not too much of a stretch, but it's a little bit of a stretch. But without ley lines with which to contain the dark mud in, the dark mud's just going to spread and disperse until it reaches a stage of equilibrium. So that's probably why we don't see it coalesced anywhere. But what's interesting is that a similar thing may have actually happened in Conria. 
Durin is said to possess dark alien blood, which I can't help but relate to the dark mud because the behavior that Durin exhibits kind of matches what we know about what happens to humans who are exposed to it for too long. In addition, Durin was supposed to represent the Negrito stage of material alchemy, which is represented by the color black, you know, and the whole magnum opus thing, of which, you know, Albedo is a second stage for whiteness, right? Also, in the, you know, flashback descriptions of how Durin is portrayed, he just looks like a big, muddy, dripping zombie dragon, so I just can't unpicture him full of dark mud. But what's even more interesting to me is that Durin was a dragon that came about during the Cataclysm. And Jin Wu outright states that the effects of the Dark Mud are strikingly similar to the way in which locals of 500 years ago described the calamity of 500 years ago, meaning that all of those abyssal creatures that came up from the depths of the chasm in Liwa during the Cataclysm were most likely related to the spread of the Dark Mud. And that spread of the dark mud might have been triggered by something that Conria did. Cause see, the dark serpent knight, Ronith, also has this to say upon his defeat. The heaven's judgment, the needle of retribution, never forget. Meaning that at some point in Conria, Celestia may have thrown a celestial nail at them in order to suppress the flow of dark mud. There may have been an instance where Conria tried to use the power of the Celestial Nails for themselves. More evidence of this is actually found in Dragonspine, where you can find several defunct ruin guards that, when spoken to, say nothing but gibberish, but some really clever people over on NGA and Reddit managed to decipher that gibberish into something readable. And it specifically reads, For the nation, we can't forego the Skyborn power, but we failed. Which leads me to believe that at some point, Conria sent out Ruin Guards and the Graders not to attack Celestia necessarily, but to seize its power. In this case, in the form of the Skyfrost Nail. Otherwise, there's no real reason why Dragonspine should have had so many Conrian machines scattered about, because Celestia would have been long gone from the Dragonspine area by the time that Conria would have been trying to attack it. We're talking about a difference of like 1,000 years here. So it's very possible that Conria accidentally or intentionally released the dark mud, initiating something like a nuclear disaster that they couldn't control on their own. So they tried to seize the Skyfrost Nail for their own use. And it would have been around that time that the twins tried to leave Tavat knowing that Conria was about to be destroyed. That's when the Sustainer of Heavenly Principles tells us that the irrigation of mankind ends now. Irrigation meaning to seize or claim unjustifiably. So what if she was actually referring to the Conrian's attempt to seize celestial power? And I could go on here, but I have one more thing I really want to talk about. I know it seems really weird to go from talking about the celestial nails to talking about the mural inside of the material domains, but there's some important stuff in here that I've only recently realized. For preliminary context, the chasm was said to have been formed by a fallen meteor when Morax was still young, so roughly 6,000 years ago, give or take. The civilization that lived in the chasm prior to this that we see underground should predate this event by a significant period of time since other civilizations with the same architecture are said to have existed before gods walked the earth, hence pre-Morax, so pre-6,000 years ago, at least. So picture a singular, unified civilization covering the entirety of Tavat, ruled by the Primordial One and its Four Shades. At some point, this civilization was destroyed by a disaster brought upon by the Second Who Came. This disaster could have brought forth the dark mud which seeped up from deep beneath the ground where it had been contained. In an attempt to stem the flow, a celestial nail was thrown into the Lisha region and that formed the chasm. The flow of the mud was halted for the time being, but at the cost of the civilization that lived there. In light of this, let's take a look at the domain mural again. At the top area, we have four eye-like symbols and one prismatic symbol-y thing in the center. This likely represents the primordial one with its four shades. Below that, we have the Triketra with a broken corner. We saw a different version of this symbol, unbroken, in the Three Realms event in Enkanamiya, which was made of snakes at the time. That version was explicitly stated to represent the three realms, the light realm, the abyssal realm or the void realm, and the human realm, 
So I think it might be safe to assume that this Triketra here is representative of the three realms and how they are intertwined with each other. The broken side could be referencing how one realm may have been destroyed or disconnected from the other two, throwing the world order out of balance, possibly due to a cataclysmic event. Maybe that was what the abyssal realm was and that's why the dark mud is seeping through it. It may not have anywhere to go. Below the Triketra, we can see a winged figure. Now this may seem odd, but I do think this figure looks like the sustainer of heavenly principles. Like look, there's even little markings for her tail coat. It kinda matches, right? Now originally I thought this figure was ascending to the heavens, but now I actually think that she's throwing things down towards Tevat. You see this Triskelion below her? What if I told you that that is a celestial nail, and those swirly lines behind it are just showing it moving downwards with force, you know, like a comet? What, you don't think it looks like a nail? Well, then what about the nail fragment? I don't know about you, but these two look pretty darn similar to me, so I'm gonna call that a representation of the celestial nail. But if that is a celestial nail, then that means that the circle with the square in the center is Tevat. And the implications of this are so strange. For one thing, it means that the domains and the doorways that lead to them would have had to have been constructed after the disaster that followed the second who came, since it's referencing the fact that there were three realms and one of them is now broken. But it also had to have been built before the formation of the chasm, since it's depicting the falling of a celestial nail and the destruction of a civilization that was once unified before gods existed. This also begs the question, who built these domains? And I don't have an answer for that, but I do think that the domains might function similarly to the sacred Sakura cleansing quest. By defeating the monsters that spawn inside of them and then offering resin to the leyline trees there, we might actually be cleansing the roots of the world tree. And that's kind of a wild thought. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this deep dive into the relationship between the mud and the nails. I know there's a lot I didn't get to cover today, but rest assured that more videos on related topics are coming soon. So thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll be back soon with some more fun theories to share. So until then, take care of yourselves and stay out of the mud. Hey, I'm watching you. <laughs>